Almost everybody understands the loss of principal or the risk of not getting their money back. In fact, when most people talk about investing, that is their greatest fear. What if I don't get my money back? Uh, I will tell you at the end of the day, there are some that are worse than that. We're going to talk about them in the show today. Well, good morning and welcome back to Consider This Program. I am your host, Joe Clark. And I'm Grant Sullivan. And we are happy to have you along. Grant, the man with a plan. Um, happy to have you along. Grant was one of my students at Purdue years and years ago. He's got his degree in financial planning and uh, and happy to have him as a big part of our team. He's uh, in the financial planning department, manager of operations, and uh, just uh, very, very honored to have him along today. He is one of the people uh, that when you call in or go to yourlifeafterwork.com, get signed up for a Next Steps meeting, Grant's one of those people uh, that you may very likely see. So the, the theme for this whole program today is aging with a plan. Remember, if you're listening to us on WIBC this morning, you only get three parts of a four-part show. And you can always go to considerthisprogram.com or our website at yourlifeafterwork.com to get the rest of the show. Um, but you're only going to get those three parts. You don't get the introduction, you don't get the outro, and you don't get one of the segments. And that's just because of the way WIBC's calendar works. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can find us, iTunes, Spotify, any of those. Uh, I think we probably have more listeners on our podcast now than we do on, uh, on the actual radio. But regardless, aging with a plan. We're going to talk about bonds. So, Grant, I'm just going to tee you up and let you go. What is a bond? A bond, Joe, is a type of security, but it is a what we call a debt security, meaning you're taking on the debt obligation of an organization, and to reward you for doing such, they're going to pay you. Now, Joe, here's what's interesting. They don't pay you interest. They don't pay you a return. They give you a coupon. A coupon. Some wise person taught you that years no, ago. He did, he did, he did. It, it's, you know, when I got into the industry in, in 1987, it confused me that people didn't understand bonds. And it's because you tax the coupon on a bond yes. the same way you tax interest on a CD. And so people believe bonds pay interest. So they don't understand that things trade at a premium and a discount and why they trade. And, you know, so the, the return that you get when, when Grant says you don't get a return, the return you get hopefully is your money back. <laughs> Right. right. But in the meantime, you are going to get a coupon and that doesn't change. So as interest rates change over on this side of the coin in new bond issues that are being issued, mm -hmm. then they they change the value of what your bond is worth on paper temporarily to reflect the differential between that and the current coupon that you would be getting. So the best way to think about a bond, you remember how I taught you how to think about this at Purdue? Yeah, and it actually brought back horrific memories because I was the big kid at the end of the uh, the teeter-totter. Ah, there you go. <laughs> and that's exactly how we teach when the <laughs> – Grant and I were both the big kids at the, we were. At the end of the teeter-totter. We but when interest rates go up, the value of your existing bonds go down. Mm -hmm. And when interest rates go down, the value of your existing bonds go up. But the way to think about a bond in most cases for the value for in your, in your portfolio. So remember those – you go through those three phases, right? Accumulation, preservation, and distribution – Right. And when you're going through those, the, especially in that preservation phase, you're really not necessarily thinking about the income that you're getting off of the off of the bond. You're not thinking about the coupon that's being paid. Uh, you're thinking more about the value, um, typically, where you think about more of the income is actually in the distribution phase, typically, but but not, you know, not always. But when people ask about how bonds are valued, the best example that I can give you that most of us can relate to is it, it's like an appraisal, right? They will tell me what my, the value of my house is worth. We've lived in our house for three years. Bank wants to know every time I fill out a personal financial statement what it's worth, right? Truth is, I ain't selling, don't know. But they tell me what it's worth based on other, other houses in our neighborhood of similar value that have sold. So mm -hmm. if you think about it, it's the best way to understand how bonds work is an appraisal. Um, and that's what really happens on your portfolio. Now, the biggest risk to most bonds, uh, everybody wants to talk about credit risk. That's you not getting your money back, right? But liquidity risk is huge, right? So we did cautionary tales a few weeks ago, but we're gonna do we're gonna do that again here in just a second because I'm gonna give you maybe two or three different bond issues to to think about, right? But um, liquidity is one of the big ones. I need my money, right? And just because my house is appraised at, let's say, $100,000, it 
doesn't mean I can sell it for $100,000. You all understand that. You may be going, well, yeah, Joe, you can probably sell it for a lot more today because houses are moving so quickly. Yeah, don't get caught up in that. My point being, just because somebody says it's worth something doesn't mean I can get it. So Grant, when he gets his investment statement and it's got a share of Apple, and I have to say this legally, we're long Apple, that means we own it, right? But if it says Apple's at $145 a share, it means there was a willing buyer and a willing seller who decided to make an exchange, right? Wall Street got paid the spread, the transaction between the two. When you look at a bond, the value of my bond is an appraisal. It's based on other bonds that sold. Huge difference in terms of, in terms of how they work. So one of my big concerns for people as we head into distribution is that people do not understand reinvestment rate risk. So Grant, why don't you explain what it is? So reinvestment rate risk, Joe, simply is this. Um, when you take that obligation and you want to repurchase another obligation, you're hoping to get the higher of the two, but not always do you get that. That's true. So let's put it in English. 1980. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, no, no, you're right. This, you're this right. is not a, you're right. I, I, I need, I, I really need you guys to grasp this. So 1980, I was a kid in high school on the debate team. I was not managing money professionally, but I've always kind of done this. That's all I've ever known. Right. And so some of you've heard this story before, but you really need to internalize it when we get into a bond portfolio situation. When you're going into distribution, people come into me, they still do today, right? 34 years later, Joe, here's my million dollars. Don't lose it. Right. Here's my million dollars. Don't lose it. Right now, when you're in accumulation, you're wanting it to grow. When you're in preservation, you're wanting it to protect you. But when you're in distribution, you really are looking for income. All right. So in 1980, most of you that are listening to the show today were not in distribution any more than I was. All right. I was a high school kid. And in 1980, if you'd have brought in your million dollars, you would have looked at me and said, Joe, don't lose the money. I was a kid, wet behind the ears. You very good reason to say, don't lose the money. Right. And I would have gone and bought CDs, certificates of deposit at 14%. And you would have had $140,000 a year income, right? In 1980. Now, 1990, I was very much in the business. And believe me, when people brought their million dollars in, it was the same thing. Don't lose the money, right? Nobody talked about the income. Don't lose the money, right? The only problem was those CDs from 1980 had matured. And now I had to turn around and buy new. That's the reinvestment. I got my million dollars back out of those CDs, but I had to buy new ones. But now the interest rate is five and a half percent, right? Now, suddenly your income went from $140,000 a year to $55,000 a year, while things got more expensive over a 10-year period of time, right? Fast forward, you know, in 2000, the CD rates were 5%. In 2010, they were 2%. And today they aren't one, Right? So you still have your million dollars 40 years later because you gave me the wrong assignment, right? When, when you walk in and you're talking to somebody who's selling you products, selling you annuities or, or selling you mutual funds or selling you anything, they're looking at it from a menu of what can I sell under suitability that is legal? What is the best story that I can tell you for today? When you're dealing with a fiduciary like Grant and I, the Financial Enhancement Group, our job is to treat your money as if it were our money and we were in the same situation. And that means I have to have a purview that is a lot longer than what happens in the next three years. I've got to be able to look out over the next two or three decades of your life as you're going through that financial journey. And reinvestment rate risk is one of the big dogs that people don't understand when they're making investment decisions. There's a lot of things that I can do today that feel good today, right? Grant and I always talk about chocolate cake and broccoli, right? We all know the broccoli is better for us long term, and we all know the chocolate tastes better today. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not even a sweet eater, but I get the picture, and I think you do too. And it's, it's very, very – you'll hear people say things about portfolios that are, in my mind, outdated and inaccurate. And if you want to understand risk, there's – 11 to 13 different risks to money, probably more if you really wanted to go put them all out. Principal risk is the one that is on, the, on our tongue all the time. It's the, one, it's the one most of us think about, right? But it really is liquidity, credit, reinvestment rate, interest rate risk. You know, all of those come into play. And, and they're true, Grant, in, in, in most investments that you buy, you have those, 
those real risks, mm-hmm. right? So just a quickie, and I'm sorry I didn't let you talk much. No, you're fine. Um, we had in 2008, had a $100,000 GMAC bond. Um, it was trading at a premium because it had a, a 7% coupon, right? And uh, all of a sudden, um, 08 hit, GM kind of went down, in case anybody forgot. Um, the bond on paper said it was worth $39,000. And the family called and said, you were right. We should have sold it. Like it's, it's, you know, no, there's no right or wrong in this. You know, we, we made the decision together. Right. And then I said, but just because it says it's worth $39,000 doesn't mean you can get it. And Adam and I, Adam is our chief investment officer and uh, one of my partners, uh, put it to market every day. The best, best available we offer we got was $19,000. For something that on paper appraised at thirty nine thousand, and I guarantee you, the person for nineteen was somebody like me, who knew what they were doing, who was going to buy it and take advantage, you know, of a little person. Instead of instead of it being the person, because we help reduce financial regrets, we're their fiduciary. We had the ability to say no. The bond matured under Ally Bank. They got their hundred thousand dollars. It all ended up being okay. But boy, boy, was it a rocky road. Bonds have more risks than people know or understand. Go to yourlifeafterwork.com. Get signed up for your next steps meeting. We look forward to meeting you.